From the early days of Christianity, people have traveled to distant lands, spreading the love and message of Christ. People left their families, cultures, and familiar surroundings to go live in an unfamiliar country and bring the Word of God to its citizens. Today's technology makes it possible to reach people in even the most remote locations. In this segment, we're going to take a look at an international ministry whose phenomenal outreach has changed the lives of millions of people around the world. Headquartered in Greenwood, Indiana, OMS International is a true global ministry, reaching out to virtually every continent on the planet. OMS was founded in Japan in 1901 by four visionaries led by the Holy Spirit to reach remote villages in Japan. OMS International's President David Long tells us how it all began. OMS had its beginning in the hearts and minds of Charles and Letty Kalman and Ernest Kilburn. They made the acquaintance of Juji Nakata, who was a Japanese pastor studying in the U.S. at that time. Through that relationship, they discovered that they had in common a passion for sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And that relationship naturally led them to Japan, where OMS International, originally the Oriental Missionary Society, had its beginning in 1901. One of the first things that the Kalmans and Kilburns did was to organize and found a Bible school for the training of national pastors in leadership. They understood from the beginning of OMS that a nation will be won by the sons and daughters of that nation. In a departure from most missionary-based ministries of the early 20th century, Charles Kalman emphasized the training of nationals as church leaders and workers, believing that the sons and daughters from each country would be the ones to reach their nation for Christ. It's a philosophy that OMS continues to practice to this day. Leadership development is crucial for the missionary ministry of OMS International. As we work to reach people for Christ and plant churches, our first priority is to raise up local leaders, national leaders, who can take the responsibility of communicating the good news in their own land. So we use both formal means of theological education in seminaries as well as on-the-job training to develop local leaders. It's exciting to have over 450 Every Community for Christ church planting teams led by nationals of their own countries who take responsibility to share the good news. Today, OMS International is a global network of missionaries, evangelists, pastors, and church leaders spread throughout 42 countries and six sending countries, including Haiti, where Radio 4VEH is spreading the gospel through solar-powered radios distributed to residents in the area, provided by people who have chosen to invest in their future. This special project is the visionary thrust of Men for Missions, the layman's voice of OMS International. MFM's dedicated lay people, men, women, and children of all ages and skills commit to at least two weeks at a time serving overseas and ministering to those in need. Every year there are between 500 and 600 people involved on short-term teams with Men for Missions. In Asia, OMS International is working in conjunction with the Japan Holiness Church and Hong Kong's United Wesleyan Graduate Institute to train new seminarians to go out into the local communities to present Jesus Christ to their fellow countrymen. OMS International also spreads the gospel to needy sectors of society through prison ministries and sports programs. To help train new leaders, OMS International has ministry with 39 seminaries and Bible institutes with more than 7,000 students around the world and also places an emphasis on non-formal lay leadership training. In 2003, more than 144,000 people received Christ as the result of OMS's ministry. For all that OMS International has accomplished, they give thanks to God. But President David Long readily admits there is still much work to be done. The Great Commission was spoken by Jesus to all of us, and no part of the Great Commission has been set aside. So we are to go and make disciples of all nations. The carrying out of that uh, commandment, the going part of the commandment is something that must be done in partnership. 
And OMS depends on partnerships around the world to carry this out. One of the most significant partnerships we have is with those who join us in intercessory prayer, those who pray for OMS and its missionaries, uh, the national workers, the co-workers that we work with, as well as those who will hear uh, the, the Word of God. There are also those who partner with us financially, supporting the many ministries of OMS throughout the world. And of course, there are those who go themselves, those who volunteer uh, to go to another country to see what God is doing there. If you would like to give of your time, invest your financial resources, or know more about OMS International, please visit their website at www.omsinternational.org.